My name is Deborah May, and I am a transfer student from Sacramento, California. I'm currently an undergraduate honors student at UC San Diego. Uh, my name is Liz Harrison, and I did my undergrad at Berkeley, and I just finished my PhD here at UCSD. Uh, my name is Takako Noguchi. I graduated uh, Osaka University in Japan. Uh, my name is Michael Gorman, and I'm a professor of psychology, so I'm the principal investigator for this lab. The Gorman Lab uh, is interested in finding ways of making uh, circadian clocks more flexible. Uh, so basically, people have realized for a long time that clocks govern all sorts of aspects of physiology and behavior. Um, and there's been an acceptance, really, of the idea that human clocks are very, very tough to shift. They shift slowly and, um, and not easily. And what we found using rodents is that there are conditions under which we can make clocks adjust a lot more fast, a lot faster um, than anyone's ever really expected. And we can make them do some unusual things in, in terms of the way a 24-hour day is patterned. So we're really interested in figuring out where does this flexibility come from, and we're hopeful that we can apply it to humans so that people who are working shifts, for instance, or doing a lot of uh, jet travel or whatever, might be able to better adjust to those schedules. I'm researching um, SCN, which is um, clock neuron located at hy hypothalamus. I research how uh, neurons, how those clock neurons create the rhythms or how they uh, synchronize each other and then create robust 24-hour uh, rhythms. And we're doing a number of projects, so some of them involve circadian rhythms in autism and uh, sleep in deployed service people and um, a couple other ones that I can't talk about. I think in the future, I'm really, really interested in the human applied kind of branch of circadian rhythm. So how to help people who um, are having health problems or, you know, there's a whole branch that deals with addiction and neurodegenerative diseases. And that's really interesting to me. So I think it would be um, really cool to use science to help those people. My favorite part of working in the lab is, is science, is doing science, coming up with experiments and planning them. It's like solving a puzzle and then looking at the data and trying to figure out what it means. Um, I like puzzles. So, but my favorite part is, um, is working with students, basically, and helping them um, develop their abilities as scientists and um, helping them become independent scientists. The most challenging thing uh, about working in science is is right now is probably the funding situation. So uh, it costs a lot of money to uh, keep an operation going and uh, uh, funds are very, very scarce. So we've been successful so far, but it's always a stress and it's always something you're thinking about um, in terms of getting the next grant to keep, keep things going. I think the most challenging part of working in the lab is actually a kind of the same side as my favorite part of working in the lab, which is that there's so much new kind of there's new information to learn every day. And so sometimes that can be a little overwhelming when you feel like maybe you can't keep up or there's, even though you feel like you've learned a lot, there's still so much more to learn. So sometimes that can be really challenging, but it's also my favorite part, so. My favorite thing about circadian rhythms is really that they're everywhere. I mean, it, it, there is really, everything has a circadian component and it's something that is, um, it's relatable, but it's also people don't think about it a lot. It's kind of taken for granted. And so uh, when you talk about it to people, you kind of get that, oh yeah, that does happen kind of moment. And that's really cool because it gets people interested in science, even though they might not consider themselves you know, scientifically oriented people. So I think that's really interesting. My favorite thing about circadian rhythms is that they are everywhere. So no matter what you're interested in, you can find something that relates to circadian rhythms. And everybody understands it and everybody relates to it. So it's really easy to tell people and convince them of how important it is. It's um, 
it happens like a um, mathematical model predict when we give a um, stress or uh, stimuli signal um, it moves as um, model predicted uh, my favorite thing about circadian rhythms is um, it's all all the big questions in one single um, topic. It's still this amazingly rich and complicated um, model system where we still have a lot to learn, but we have these amazing tools, we have these amazing perspectives, um, but it, it's all about the complexity of the relationship between genes, environments, brains, and behavior, and it's just a wonderful um, grouping of these things in, in one system. It's very beautiful. <laughs>